Hello everyone and welcome to the channel and here is my follow-up video about One UI 8. Today I will show you all the new features in Samsung apps that I didn't mention in my previous video including the updated Samsung DeX and let me tell you that they got a lot of hidden features that you need to know about so without further ado let's jump in. Let's start with the internet app and the first change is in the menu. Now you will see a complete redesign. First, it has a transparent background. You can see the website link over here so you can share it immediately. Plus, now you have a dock and a separate container for the rest of the items that you can scroll through horizontally instead of vertically. Plus, when you try to edit these items, you will see a totally different Page. First, each section now has a title. So for example, we have the available buttons, the menu, and the toolbar. But previously, it was hard to tell if this part is the menu or this one, but now everything is clear. Secondly, you get a minus button next to each one, so you can quickly remove items from the list like this. And at the top, it tells you that you can touch and hold to move items. So it gives you a hint on how you can organize things, but those two options didn't exist before. And lastly, when you take a look at the top section, you will see that the customized menus title got removed and we got a new done button because now when you make any changes to this area, you have to tap on done to apply them. But previously, any change you make will immediately reflect on your menus. We also got one minor change under settings. The security and the privacy is now called privacy dashboard, but both work exactly the same. Now we are done with the internet app and now let's talk about the new changes under gallery and I will start with the photo editor. The first thing you will notice here is the better organization and smaller buttons. For example, the AI editor is now a lot smaller and on the same line with the rest of the options. These three buttons are now grouped together with the rotation options under the same container. And when I expand any of these options, you will see that the photo moves up and down. But previously, this wasn't the case. When I expand anything, the photo remains in place. Another minor change is the updated filters icon, but there is no difference in the functionality. And when you go to decorations and then go to text, you will see here that this box is now hiding the font and you need to tap on the handle to expand like this. But previously, you can see everything immediately. And the last change under the photo editor is the redesigned undo and redo buttons. Moving to the video editor, you will see a similar design language. Instead of having big buttons like the adjust speed one, now it's just an icon next to the play and pause chip that you can expand and collapse. And when you go to the crop, you will see the exact same differences we have seen under the photo editor with the new icons as well. Moving to the search, here you will see a redesigned search bar. And when you tap on both, you will see that the recent searches and suggestions swapped places. And we also have a title for the suggestions. Plus, now you have the ability to clear individual items from your search history, which wasn't the case before. And when you tap on the microphone, previously it used to show only the bubble, but now it opens the keyboard. Moving to the stories page, there are a lot of new design changes, but because I don't have enough photos on my S24 Ultra, I will put a screenshot from the S25 Ultra when it used to run One UI 7 to be able to see the difference between the two. The first change is the new gradient color behind the stories that will change based on the photo colors. Here I have purple and here turquoise. Plus we have some quick shortcuts over here like the ability to immediately add the story to your favorites by tapping on this button over here. We also got a small counter and an animated sand clock icon. Unfortunately, once I added the stories to my favorites, they disappeared from the top carousel and I couldn't revert this action. So let's move on to the next change, which is the new suggestions that appear on top of the text box. So you can quickly access them from here and instead of tapping on the search bar first like before. And the last change in this page is the created by you title is now called create a story, but both are exactly the same. Last but not least, the app menu got updated with a new transparent background and redesigned buttons, which is something I already talked about in my previous video. Next, the clock app. And here I'm gonna show you two new changes. The first one is under alarms. If you already have a group 
when you tap on the plus button, now you have the ability to add your existing alarms to the group. The second change is related to the widgets. Now when I add an alarm widget to my home screen like this, and then tap to select the alarm I want, now I have the ability to select a group, not only individual ones like before, which will make it easier for me to control multiple alarms from my home screen. Before jumping to the next chapter, if you like any of the wallpapers you see in this video, they are now available in the Wallpapers by In-Depth Tech Reviews app, and the latest patch includes some gorgeous wallpapers that I'm 100% sure you will like them. You will find Google Play Store download link in the description, and now let's get back to One UI 8. Now let's talk about the new changes in Samsung DeX and I have my phone already connected. When you go to Samsung DeX and then connected display, you will see far more options when compared to One UI 7. The first thing you can do here is to choose between mirrored and extended. Under the extended mode, you can adjust the physical location of the devices as you see now on the screen. And then we have the font size option so you can make it so much bigger using this slider and you have plenty of sizes to choose from. Then we have the display zoom, which also magnifies the font, but it doesn't make the icons bigger. As you see here, it only adds extra space between the icons and that's pretty much it. Then we have the display resolution that can go up to 4K now, but because the display connected is 1080p, this is the maximum one I'm getting. Then we have four different angles to choose from, 90 degrees, 180, 270, or zero. You can also set the screen timeout settings and you have all these options. In addition to a toggle says, keep screen on while viewing, and this one will use the phone's front camera to detect your face and see if you are looking at the display. Back to the main settings page, and now we have plenty of options to customize the mouse and the trackpad. The first thing you can do is to show the touchpad when decks run automatically, and then we have the touchpad scrolling detection. You can choose the direction, and then we have the touchpad gestures. You have one for the three fingers and one for the four fingers. Then we have more settings to adjust the pointer speed, wheel scrolling speed, enhanced pointer precision, pointer size and color. You can make it bigger or smaller and choose from these colors. Then we have the primary mouse button, secondary button, middle button, and additional two buttons depending on the hardware you are using. Then we have something for the S Pen. You have two modes to use the S Pen as a mouse you have the pin mode or the mouse mode. The pin mode will allow you to hover the pin over the display and it will act as a mouse. So let me show you how it works. Here is the trackpad and it says here I need to switch to landscape view. I can double tap this button to change to landscape view and when I hover the pin over the display, it acts as a pointer and it's very precise and I like this new feature. So let's close it and go to the mouse mode. And by this, the pen has to touch the phone to be able to use it as a mouse. And finally, you get a toggle to play sound on the connected display. Beside the new settings, Samsung DeX itself got a lot of new features. The first one is the dock at the bottom that matches the one you have on your phone and the running apps will appear next to it with a separator between them. You get quick access to one of the running apps like YouTube Music, for example. And when you tap on the other icon, it will show you the rest of apps running in a stack. So you can choose the one you want. And then we have the apps placed horizontally by default instead of vertically, but you still can place them the way you want. Then we have the app drawer is now showing in a floating window, same as the search. And we got redesigned calendar, quick settings, notifications, and volume. So overall, everything looks more modern with One UI 8. And we also got an updated a recent apps screen that will show you much bigger windows. Now let's talk about the new changes under the reminder app. And the first one is the removal of the side menu that includes the automatically created categories. And now you get immediate access from the main page and the rest of the categories you created have their own section that you can collapse or expand like this. Plus, when you start scrolling, you will notice here that everything will collapse automatically and it will also show you a tooltip with the name 
of the section you are currently viewing, which looks really nice. Samsung also reordered a lot of the menus. For example, the trash and settings are now accessible from the ellipses. The sorting options that used to be over here are also located under the ellipses. And we got two new options, ascending and descending. And when you expand the two menus, you will see a lot of new changes. First, we got this new sync now button. The edit option is now called select. The view option that used to have card or list view got removed and now we only have the card option. We also got a new option called manage categories that didn't exist before. It will take you to a page similar to this one, but the main difference between the two is now you can immediately tap on the category to edit, but previously to do the edits, you need to tap on hold first and then tap on edit to access the same page. Plus Samsung removed the ability to pin or unpin categories. So when I tap on hold on any of them, I only can edit or delete or reorder by using the handles, but I cannot pin the categories. The hide all categories card option got removed because now you can simply hide or unhide your categories like this. Plus they also removed the hide completed reminders and also the pin important to top, but you still can access this one under settings when you go there and then scroll down a bit, you will see that now we have the pin important reminders to top under settings and instead of showing under the ellipses. Another change under settings is the notifications toggle is now called shared reminder notifications and it's located under the alerts category and instead of having its own category like before and as you see we still have the alerts category in the previous version so now it makes more sense to include all the alerts under one section. Back to the main page when you scroll down you will see a whole new section for suggestions that you can collapse or expand like this. It will show you some ready-made reminders that you can immediately use after applying your edits which will save you some steps in addition to the updated text box. The first change here is the ability to use the microphone to create your reminder which wasn't the case before. The plus button that takes you to the full screen view is now gone and when you tap on the text box now and type anything now you have the ability to switch to the full screen view immediately by using the handle which is sometimes buggy as you see here i can reach the same view directly from here or i can cancel and only use the text box that has much more options when compared to the previous version the main difference between the two is the ability to create everything directly from here without the need to go to the full screen view for example when you tap on the calendar button we used to get only the presets with the ability to add a custom preset if I want and then I need to tap on the time to choose the time but now when you expand the same page you will see all the options you might need you have the presets you have the custom date and time so you don't need to go anywhere to finish your reminder and the same applies to the location when I go to the location here I can only access the presets while here I can access both the presets and also pick a custom location I can add photos I can choose which category to list it under and also add check boxes which wasn't the case before but if you want to get the same options in the previous version you have to go to the full screen view and the last change in this area is the automatic suggestions you get while creating your reminders once i typed the word grocery now it suggested a grocery list so it added the items for me and I can use this as a template to save myself some steps. The next app we have is the calendar app which got three new changes. The first one is the updated stickers icon. As you see both work exactly the same but the icon is different and now you have the ability to create a reminder directly from the calendar app which is a nice touch and finally when you try to create a new calendar event and start typing things related to what you already have in your calendar, you will see some suggestions at the top. Now let's talk about the contacts app, which got two new changes. And the first one is the updated profile card page. The first change is the create profile card button is now removed. And now you can tap anywhere on the top half to get access to the same page. So let me choose one of the photos I have 
to show you the difference between the two. This is the exact same photo and here you will see a totally different design. The first change you will notice here is I'm getting the proper preview that matches my phone design which is portrait while here I'm getting the square one meant for tablets and foldables plus when I tap on preview you will see that the portrait one is misaligned in the older version which doesn't look great but now I'm getting better alignment also we have all the buttons at the bottom of the screen which is much easier to access you have the change image you have the text and then we have effect the portrait studio so as you see everything is located or is scattered across the screen but now things are ordered logically plus we got a new option here called also use as profile picture so you can use the same photo for both instead of doing it two times another change here is when you tap on your profile picture only you still can access the profile card from here which wasn't the case before the second change is the ability to access core recordings in contact history so when you open the contact page you will see all the related recordings all in one place which will make it easier for you i don't have any recordings to show you how it works in action but this is a screenshot from android authority so that's it when it comes to the contacts app now let's talk about the camera and the first change is the ability to swipe up to access the quick controls and instead of switching the cameras but this feature needs to be activated under settings previously we used to have a toggle called swipe up or down switch cameras but now it's a drop down menu so you can choose between switch cameras or open quick controls i also spotted a couple of new changes under advanced video options previously we used to have a drop down menu to prioritize video quality or saving space which is now gone and the HDR 10 plus videos is now called HDR. Now let's move on to the weather app which got some new changes. The first one is the newer and updated animation. As you see it looks more natural and much better in comparison. Plus we got a more transparent background same as all other areas in One UI 8. The second change is under settings. Now when you go to units you will see a new option called hybrid which is a mix between the matrix and imperial. Other than this I found a discrepancy between the two in some areas like the air quality index, the UV index and humidity but other than this everything is about the same and one more feature missing from the newer version which is the radar and maps so that's it when it comes to the weather app now let's talk about the ai select and the first improvement is the ability to immediately select what's on the screen without the need to wait for the animation and to try this i will try to immediately select what's on the screen once i trigger the feature so as you see this one didn't work while One UI 8 did allow me to select the car plus I found one more change is when I tap somewhere on the screen like this it goes in full screen view which never happens with the older version no matter where I tap it never goes to the full screen view while here I can do this and it will pick the full screen in some cases so that's it when it comes to the AI select now let's talk about the secure folder and there are some changes that I missed to mention in my previous video and the first one is under the lock type which is now called secure folder lock and biometrics when you open this page you will notice here that the fingerprints toggle is now a menu because with one UI 8 you can set fingerprints totally different from the ones you use to unlock your phone and it allows you to add multiple ones as well if you want to. the second change is under the auto lock secure folder and you'll notice here that the each time i leave an app option is no longer available in one ui 8 and inside the secure folder you will see some new changes the first one is the removal of the magnifying glass and it's now located under the ellipses and the encrypt option is now this lock icon so they replaced the search with the encrypt and when you expand the menus now we have the ability to hide apps inside the locked folder so i i can unhide this app and it will appear over here or i can hide it and then tap on done so that gives you one extra layer of security plus you get quick access to hide the secure folder and when you choose this option you can only access it by using the quick settings style so that's pretty much it for today these are all the new features i wanted to show you in one ui 8 please let me know in the comments if i missed anything but for now thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video